Hi and welcome back to the ElectroMaster channel, the place where electronics come to life. Today, I'm going to show you how I repair a switching power supply from a Berserber industrial scale, model GLMICWM. If you've ever had issues with these power supplies or just want to understand how they work, stick with me until the end. We're diving straight into the technical details, diagnostics, troubleshooting, and repair. I start with a visual inspection of the board. I look for burned, cracked, or discolored components. I check the capacitors to see if they are bulging or leaking. I carefully examine the solder joints, especially around connectors and power transistors, to make sure there are no broken or weak connections. I follow the copper traces to identify any burnt or broken areas. I check for any components that may be loose, misaligned, or poorly mounted on the board. Finally, I look for dust, oxidation, or signs of liquid damage that could cause issues. During the visual inspection, I notice two cracked diodes with damaged casings, a clear sign of thermal stress or overload. Around them, there are visible burn marks and smoke residue on the PCB, indicating that the components failed under load and overheated. This type of damage suggests either a downstream short circuit or a fault in the rectification or switching stage that caused the diodes to be excessively stressed. I will quickly remove the electronic board from the metal support to gain full access to the underside and take a closer look at the damaged area. I'm using a screwdriver to remove the mounting screws and carefully detach the board, making sure not to damage any components or PCB traces. It's important to handle the board gently during disassembly, as some units may have additional ground wires or spacers connected to the chassis. To access the damaged components, I'm desoldering the two filter capacitors from the power supply section of the board. Using a soldering iron with the proper tip and fresh solder, I carefully heat the joints and remove the capacitors, making sure not to lift or damage the pads on the PCB. These capacitors are obstructing access to the two faulty diodes, so their removal is necessary to work safely and clearly in the affected area.
After removal, I measure the two capacitors using a dedicated device, the Atlas ESR60, to check their electrical condition. This instrument allows me to determine the ESR, equivalent series resistance, and capacitance of each capacitor, which is crucial for detecting hidden faults that are not visible during visual inspection. The measured values are compared with the nominal specifications to determine if the capacitors are within acceptable limits or need replacement. I will desolder the two faulty diodes from the circuit board to replace or test them separately. I use a temperature-controlled soldering iron and a copper braid to remove the solder from the diode terminals, heating precisely and cleaning the contacts thoroughly. I proceed carefully to avoid damaging the pads or traces on the PCB and to protect the surrounding components. I will proceed to measure the nearby components with a multimeter. I check resistors, diodes, and transistors to identify abnormal values or short circuits. Measurements are carefully performed on the circuit board to detect faulty or damaged components that may affect the power supply's operation. I didn't find any other faulty components nearby, but I noticed a switch on the board labeled 230V and T85 Micro Ferrazi. This switch is part of the diode circuit and can affect the power supply's operation. To better understand its role, I will create a schematic drawing of the circuit including this switch, so I can analyze its function within the overall system.
I couldn't identify the exact type of the two diodes because they are completely destroyed. I will rely on my experience to select suitable components and replace them. For the repair, I will install two HER308 diodes, which support a maximum voltage of 1000 volts and a continuous current of up to 3 amperes, values appropriate for this circuit. After performing the measurements, the two capacitors are still within specifications, so I will solder them back onto the board. I carefully redo the solder joints using quality solder, ensuring good electrical contact without overheating the pads. This step restores the circuit to its original configuration, preparing it for final testing. After reinstalling the capacitors, I will continue with a series of measurements on both the primary and secondary sides of the power supply. I check continuity, component values, and possible short circuits using a multimeter in passive mode, without powering the board. On the primary side, I focus on the startup, rectification, and switching circuits, while on the secondary side I analyze filtering, regulators, and connections to the outputs. These checks are essential to ensure there are no major faults before the initial power-up of the board. I didn't find any issues during the checks, so I will power up the supply at 230 volts to observe its behavior. I connect the supply directly to the mains and visually monitor the board for signs of operation, unusual sounds, burning smell, or any signs of overheating. This initial power-up is essential to verify whether the repair was successful and if the supply starts under stable conditions. After powering on, I observe that the supply outputs 39.5 volts on the 40 volt line, which indicates proper operation within specifications. The voltage is stable, with no significant fluctuations, showing that the rectification and filtering stages on the secondary side are functioning correctly. This result confirms that the repair was successful and the power supply is working properly. I will reinstall the circuit board onto the metal support, in its original position, ensuring a solid mechanical fit. 
I apply thermal paste to the contact surfaces of the heat sinks to ensure efficient heat transfer between the power components and the metal base. This step is essential for proper cooling during operation, preventing thermal stress on transistors or voltage regulators. Finally, I will re-measure the output voltage using a higher precision instrument to verify the exact value delivered by the power supply. After confirming the voltage, I will thermally monitor the main components, especially the diodes, transistors, and capacitors, to check for any abnormal overheating during operation. This final check ensures the power supply is operating stably and safely for long-term use. All checks have been successfully completed. The output voltage is within specifications, and the components remain at normal temperatures during operation. The power supply operates stably, without any signs of faults or abnormal behavior, confirming that the repair is successfully finished. And that was the repair of the switching power supply from the Beserba GLMI CWM scale. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or want to see other types of repairs. Until next time, stay tuned to Electromaster, where electronics come to life.